So here's a question for you guys. Can you remove the strain? Can you remove the headache from power meter measurement? What do I mean by that? What I'm talking about today is whether you can invent, whether we can create a power meter measurement that's accurate and reliable, but yet dispenses with the classic strain gauge. Remember, uh, power meters historically have used strain gauges, that little bit of magic that converts mechanical deflection into electrical power from numerous sites around the bike. And we've been very inventive over the years how we've applied strain gauge technology to the measurement of the force that you're putting through the pedals, through the cranks, through the chain, through the hub, you know, through the whole system really. If you think about it for a second, we've got pedal-based strain gauges like the Garmin Vector, the PowerTap P1, the Favoro systems. We've also got crank arm technology, classically Strages, InfoCrank. We've got crank, crank spider, and also chain ring strain gauges. We've even got bottom bracket axle strain gauges. We've got chain strain gauges. Well, when I say train, strain gauges, imputation of strain from vibrations or lack of vibrations in the chain. We've also got power tab hubs like the G3, which for more than 10 years have given us power based around the hub. Now, the trouble with these is they're very expensive. You know, we're not talking about one or two strain gauges. We're talking about quite a number of strain gauges. In fact, on the Quark D0, they're saying there's 10 strain gauges built into the new Quark D0 for increased accuracy. Nearly all of the crank-based power meters from the last, let's say, 10 years have had eight strain gauges in them, like the SRMs. The SRMs had eight strain gauges in them. And even in the PowerTap P1, the pedal-based power system or the Garmin Vector there's eight strain gauges on each side. That's 16 strain gauges if you buy a bilateral dual system, which is gonna be incredibly expensive. If anyone can invent an accurate, reliable, non-strain gauge based power measurement system, then it will undercut all of our current technology and, and be potentially amazing in terms of its price power point. It would definitely be a runaway success. However, there is a caution here. You remember the limits power meter, which was not a runaway success, shall we say? Uh, pretty much a runaway failure, even though they raise a lot of money on Kickstarter or the equivalent of Kickstarter. Basically, Limits had only four strain gauges per side, and I think that contributed to its failure. There were other factors too, but I'm just saying, cutting corners regarding the strain gauges hasn't proven a great success so far. So here's an interesting thing, guys. Several systems, several probably now defunct systems, several companies have tried a non-strain gauge approach. And one of the first actually was Polar. Who remembers Polar's CS600 chain attempt to measure power? Now this was a system that actually measures by the links in the chain and the vibrations in the chain, how much strain was the chain under? How much force were you putting through that chain? And of course, if you measure along the top line, the deviation in the top line of the chain, as opposed to the bottom, because remember that's being forced around by the top of the crank here, then you will get a pretty good idea of what's going on in your system. And to be honest, once set up accurately, it wasn't dreadfully inaccurate. It was actually fairly good, but it met with some problems. Basically, it tended to work better on averaging over time than instantaneous power. The gauges had to be very close to the chain, as you see here. You had to have excessively wires so you could measure at the uh, rear derailleur pulley the speed of the chain. And believe it or not, you actually also had to have the chain density. You had to do a calculation to find chain density. And to really put the nail in the coffin, it really wasn't that cheap at around $700 or £500. You know, it wasn't that good. And finally, it probably wasn't that good in terms of weatherproofing either. So really the Polar CS600 died a death, even though it wasn't the worst idea in the world. Actually measuring from the chain may come back in the future. Now an alternative non-strange gauge system was, who remembers the Ergamo system from around 2004? Now when I saw this head unit, I couldn't believe how sci-fi this looked. Wow, this is one sexy head unit at the time. You know, we're talking about 2004 here. Now Ergamo was a bottom bracket based system what it did is it peeked through little holes with an optical sensor. So it basically measured via an optical system the amount of strain in the system, but without a strain gauge. And it was potentially a very attractive system. Unfortunately, of course, it had a problem getting its head around these different bottom bracket standards, which are all of a mess, as we know, in the bike industry. And in addition, it kind of came out with that old school square tapered axle design, which became obsolete. You know, that was its kind of launch model.
So it had, it had some problems. Also, the optical technology may not have been the best, but it doesn't mean to say the bottom bracket power base measurement is necessarily a bad idea. In fact, rotor in power, the two in one in power, actually does do um, bottom bracket base measurement. It takes one measurement from the crank spider and a second measurement from the bottom bracket axle. And we've had a new announcement actually from Raceface and also Eastern that they're coming to market 2017, 2018 with their cinch based system, which is basically a bottom bracket based power measurement. Now, the problem with relying solely on the bottom bracket base measurement is because your crank and your crank arm are fixed to the bottom bracket, you can't easily have an independent left and right measure. But in terms of doubling up and working out what your power is meant to be, it does a fairly good, if it does a fairly good guesstimate of total power. Of course, it's measuring one-sided power pretty accurately. And if you're just comparing it against yourself in terms of reliability, because your left and right leg imbalance is not likely to vary a lot with time. I mean, it may vary, but not a huge amount. That guesstimate of total power is likely to be reliable for you. Now, there is another way to dispense with uh, direct strain gauge power measurement, and that's with what they call opposing forces power meter. Well, that's just a fancy way of saying that if you know the environmental conditions and you know the speed, you can basically calculate the power of the rider. We can do that in spreadsheet form, but these have been coded into apps and into bicycle computers. But the problem with this is knowing the environmental conditions is actually incredibly complicated. If you think about it, you need to work out the potential energy from climbing or descending. And you need the kinetic energy, rolling, accelerating, decelerating. And you also need to know drag. So you need to know wind conditions. Effectively, you need to know wind conditions, rolling resistance, ground speed, gradient. You need to know the mass of the rider. You know, there's lots of factors here that need to be uh, measured. And do we have the technology to actually measure it? Well, the first ones to market on this that did anything like a reasonable job were the iBike Newton. And okay, the head unit is a little bit clunky. It itself is sticking out quite a bit in the wind. So the aerodynamics are not going to be perfect from this unit, but it has an elevation sensor. It has an accelerometer. It also has a wind sensor, it has a little rechargeable battery in there. So it's collecting information on environmental conditions. And it turned out that if you spend some time setting this up accurately, then it would actually give a pretty good guess of environmental conditions and it would be able to work out power pretty well. However, there is a catch, of course, which is if the rider changes their, let's say, clothing or their setup or particularly their position or obviously the bike, then you're going to have uh, a completely different calculation and it's going to throw the figures off quite a lot. And that is why the iBike Newton probably never caught on. In addition to that, it was a high price, around about $1,000 or £800 when it came to market originally in 2004 and they tried to relaunch it in 2014 but it turns out that they've gone on to kickstarter again and they've launched as you probably well know a new version of this called the power pod now the power pod is a claimed totally new unit but if you actually go under the hood it's really a revision of the iBike newton now the price is much more realistic it's around about 300 dollars or roughly 200 pounds and it requires that clean calibration again. Now, the problem with the price point is in the intervening 10 years since the iBike Newton first came to market, a lot of cheaper power meters have come to market as well, like for II Precision, which is around 399. And also just this week, I think we've had the announcement of the Power to Max NG Eco, which is a crank based power system, which is retailing at 500, but will probably come discounted under that. So at $300, the power pod may not be enough. But I will say that in terms of capturing environmental conditions, it actually does a pretty good job. And some of the graphs, for example, of wind, you know, being in or sheltering from the wind look really impressive. And quite a few positive reviews have come out of the power pod, even though I'm pretty certain you'll never fully be able to replace what a strain gauge based power meter does. But before we forget, guys, there is also um, some other novel non-strain gauge technology power meters. In particular, remember Cyclops brought to market their power cow, which guesses power, if you like, from a heart rate based measurement. A number of reviews, including DC Rainmaker site, 
have measured the accuracy of the power cow versus power to max or other power based strain gauge based technologies and found it to be pretty accurate again not really instantaneous because remember your heart rate lags significantly behind your effort your heart rate's basically you know 30 60 90 seconds behind at least your instantaneous effort so always the heart rate based measurement is going to be very laggy compared to instantaneous strain based technology but over time it actually wasn't bad and of course if it is using heart rate it completely sidesteps the bike as the necessary part of the technology for the measurement and that's very clever because you can then get your power from let's say running or rowing or you know any other kind of fitness activity you can get a guesstimate of power from um, indirect measurements there so Cyclops power cow, cow is potentially very attractive and the price point is frankly uh, amazing for that it's under $100 or under £80 and so you could potentially pick up a great bargain there and so it's still on the market yeah I've got to acknowledge it's not fully accurate for those, but, the, but for those people that want a ballpark figure that uh, can't afford a strain gauge based um, power meter you know power cow may be one to consider and given you're going to wear a heart rate monitor for some activities anyway, but it's going to give you imputed power for not much more than just a simple heart rate monitor, I think the Cyclops Power Cal is still worth considering. But there's one more I want to tell you about, which is the so-called Arrowfly. Have you heard about that, guys? The Arrow pa Arrowfly Power Meter. Now, this is a tiny, you know, two centimeter screw-on power meter, which goes onto the bicycle valve, either Schrader or Presta. And within it includes certain types of environmental measures, if you like. Now, it actually contains a pressure sensor, but there's a lot of debate online whether it's measuring inner tube based air pressure or whether it's measuring environmental air pressure. And I think the consensus is not measuring the air pressure in the inner tube, it's measuring the environmental air pressure. It also, in that tiny little device, is containing an accelerometer to measure wheel rotations. And it's able to work out from that the actual speed and also quite unbelievably it measures the cadence as well so it's measuring speed cadence and air pressure it's also able to make a guess on the power rather like Strava does by the way if it knows the environmental conditions the gradient and your speed it can work out with a let's say rough guess how much power you've put out over that climb let's say but we all know that the, the Strava based algorithm is not entirely accurate but that's not to say you would ignore it. And if you don't have a power meter on the bike, you know, a lot of people look that up on Strava to see where they're doing. Now, that's really what I'm putting the Arrowfly system into, that kind of bracket as, look, it's never going to be accurate in that sense of the strain-based power meter. But if it's coming in at $100, which they're saying, it may be worth thinking about. And there's already a couple of reviews online which show that it is measuring something. Now, it doesn't have to be entirely accurate. Here's the thing about power meters, guys, that people forget. It doesn't have to be wholly accurate unless you're measuring against the definitive third-party gold standard or, in, or against a you know, competitor or a friend. If you're not measuring against an objective standard, then 100% accuracy is not required. What is required is reliability. Now, unfortunately, the reliability of the Arrowfly and all these other non-strain-based units are also up for question. But if you're only measuring against yourself, if something is fairly reliable, i.e. it's measuring the same thing every time, then that might be worth considering. And to be honest, at $100, you can take a punt on some of these technologies and see whether it works for you. And I've heard that Arrowfly are bringing out Eurobike just next week, the Arrowfly Plus, which is an enhancement of a rechargeable head unit, in addition to their valve-based sensor system. So where are we at, guys? Well, we can return to where we started and say that we've come a long way. We've come a long way in the last 15 years or so. You know, in the late 90s, we got PowerTap and SRM being the leaders in strain-based power technology. And since then, we've got all sorts of new strain-based power gauges at lower price point, including, believe it or not, those ones in the shoe. And we are always waiting for the Brim Brothers shoe-based technology, which seems to be always on the edge of coming to market but if you heard of this new one by luck there's a new player on the market which is called luck and it's a chinese or taiwanese manufacturer who are bringing to market a mini strain gauge in the sole of the shoe so we've got incredible technology packed into a very small space but for sure if you compromise on the 
quality or you compromise on the number of strain gauges, it seems like the accuracy and probably reliability go out of the window. But we've got a whole host of technology for non-strain based imputed power, which basically make their best guess at power. And my position on this is that the ability to guess power from environmental conditions, we're not quite there yet, guys. We're basically nearly there, but they are not fully accurate for any serious rider. So for serious riders, I would still recommend you stick with a strain based power gauge system. And you can pick those up second hand, like an old power tap, you know, like the Mavic Open Pro power tap first generation. Okay, not the wired, I'm talking about wireless. You know, you can pick those up for three, four hundred dollars on eBay. And you can probably pick up the first generation quarks for around about three to five hundred dollars as well. So you can get into strain based power meters really pretty cheaply, guys. But for those casual riders who don't need full accuracy but want a little bit of reliability, or for those riders that want to measure something other than the standard parameters on your head unit, for example, you want to measure you know, your wind and you want to measure your environmental conditions accurately, you know, PowerPod and similar technologies coming to market in the future are bringing something to the table. All right, I'm saying they're not fully accurate in terms of power right now, but they are potentially attractive. And if, and if they can bring their price under $100, and that might be why they're at second hand, then they're definitely worth considering, as are the as are the heart rate based monitors and potential potentially new sensors that we haven't even thought about for the future guys. So yeah, it's boom time for power meters, both strain gauge and non-strain gauge power meters. If you can spare a few minutes, have a look at our Patreon site. We appreciate that. But as always, stay safe out there. Have a great ride. See you next time.